Was that four or five? He's lost count and still thinks he can drive. Do you think he knows that when he is caught and charged with impaired driving, he'll lose his license and a lot more? If he gets in his car, he'll face costs exceeding $20,000. Does he realize he could have a criminal record for his choice to drive? And it could be much worse if he crashes. Wonder what he'll be thinking tomorrow. Visit ArrivaLive.org to find out more. Arrive Alive. Drive sober. You're watching Rogers TV, St. John's. Welcome back to Out of the Fog. I'm here with Nick Cranford, the author of NL Snowmageddon 2020. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you. So we'll get to the book in a minute, but I understand that your kind of first move in this whole capturing the spirit of the storm um, was a Facebook group. Yeah, so well, look look at where we came. I mean, look <laughs> where we went. I mean, started from Facebook to, to book. So what gave you the idea to start a Facebook group uh, once that storm hit? Well, basically, I realized uh, the morning the storm hit, uh, you know, state of emergency was declared. Um, you know, this, this was going to be bad. And, you know, people were probably going to be trapped in their homes. So I figured, hey, people are going to need a place to go. Um, you know, so a lot of people, you know, they might be afraid to call certain authorities, but they might be more friendly on, on, on a social media site. So I decided to create a, a little gathering like place so that people can, can go. And what were some of the, I guess, topics of conversation that repeatedly came up in the Facebook group? Uh, some of the conversations were about, hey, I'm snowed in and, you know, uh, I need uh, chips and beer. What's open? What's closed? I need, I need to be <laughs> digged out. I mean, all that. Were you ever, I guess, concerned about false information or rumor spreading? Did you try to kind of weed it out and keep it all factual? Well, it's, it's to be expected, right? So obviously, uh, I've, I've had a great moderator team. Uh, I'm going to name them uh, Nick Hillier, Jeff Clark, uh, Carolyn Parsons, uh, Bev Morgan, um, who else am I forgetting, and my father, Jerry Cranford. Uh, if there's anybody else I left out, I apologize. <laughs> so, and then... I guess once it, the conversation switched from the snow and just the vast amount of snow into the cleanup and all of that and, and the community efforts, I guess what did you th see, think the tone of the Facebook group was and what did people, um, kind of, what moved you in, to write a book? Well, I mean, at first, I mean, with the cleanup, there was, there was frustration, obviously. Sure. But, uh, but, but as time went on, I, I think people started to, to make the most of the, of the situation and you know, they, they turned it into a party and, <laughs> you know, people made shoveling fun. I, I, I think that's what happened. We, we made shoveling great again. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if it was great to begin with, but it, it was fun. Yes. And so, you know, you have this Facebook group that has an incredible amount of, uh, I guess, followers or members. Mm -hmm. Do you recall kind of ballpark how many people were in it at the peak? At the peak, uh, within three and a half days, I went from zero members at 11.45 a.m. Friday, January 17th, to 100,000 at around 9.48-ish Monday night, the following Monday. Wow. I mean, I guess that's you know, almost a fifth of our population. Or Pretty do you much. think that there's people from outside the province that were in the group, too? Absolutely. I've had people from all across Canada... Uh, several parts of the U.S., even as far as uh, Ireland, um, England, uh, the U.K., um, yeah, uh, essentially other countries. So it's, it's gone global. And, of course, you know, part of the, the narrative that came out of the storm was that people were helping each other. You know, communities were formed where maybe people didn't know their neighbor as well and uh, stepped up. Um, is there any, are there any stories that stick out in your memory from, um, from the Facebook group and from hearing about the story? Uh, one story that really uh, uh, stuck out to me was uh, there was a 91-year-old man who offered to help shoveling as well. Um, there was also the, uh, the, the, the volunteer drivers during the state of emergency who volunteered to, to drive people to the hospital when all the roads were shut down and when the ambulances and police cars could, or the yeah, ambulances couldn't get to them, so wow. it's pretty good. So all of these experiences, all these stories, and all these photos, um, and you decided to publish a book uh, capturing the spirit of, you know, of our community in that storm. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess, how'd you get the idea to actually publish a book for it? 
Well, my family owns the book publishing company, uh, Flanker Press, uh, your go-to place for all books Newfoundland. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of, I, I remember there was a book made about Hurricane Igor about 10 years ago, and I realized early on that, hey, you know, people were, uh, people, was, this was turning into a phenomenon, like a big, big party. So I realized, you know what, let's capture it into a photo album so that people can remember it forever. And so what was the process like of, I guess, deciding what to go in, would go in the book and, and arranging for it to be there? Well, I got over a thousand uh, photo submissions uh, from the group. Did and you put it out there to ask people? Ab okay. Absolutely, yes. And uh, yeah, so I got the permission. And so basically me and my uh, family, uh, the Flanker Press production team, we, uh, we, we, we it, a lot of work went into this, right? So. Uh, no doubt. Yeah, so uh, we, we had to f figure out, you know, which, which photos were gonna go in, uh, how it was gonna be laid out. So it, it, was, it was pretty tedious, but, uh, but we, we made it work. And you've got it divided into three sections. Uh, so could you tell us a bit about what those sections are and what you're trying to get across with them? The first section is St. John's Metro. So okay. this basically details the snowmageddon in the St. John's area, um, you know, the metro, metro area. And yeah, so it pretty much details the state of emergency in St. John's uh, that week. Uh, the second section is beyond the overpass. We all know that saying, of course. <laughs> so that pretty much covers all the communities uh, within the Avalon Peninsula, uh, up as far as Elliston, I believe. So, you know, it wasn't just St. John's, right? Right. <laughs> and uh, the third section is have fun while shovel. Like <laughs> I said, we made shoveling great again. <laughs> and in the, uh, the have fun while shovel, there's lots of, um, like I say, people looking like they're actually happy when they're shoveling. What was it about the storm that you think pe that made people able to enjoy something that is a, a pain most days? Well, I mean, look at this. I mean, you, you, you got to look for joy in the little things, right? <laughs> uh, we, we were all in this together. Um, you know, our, our late friend Nevaeh always said, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. So we got this storm, we turned it into a party. <laughs> and you've captured some elements of the party and some elements of the socialization on the go in there. Um, do you have a favorite photo of anything that stands out for you of all the photos in there? Uh, my favorite photo of all the pictures is the one of the army meeting our friend Matthew. Uh, yes, he, his dream was to see the army and when they came here, they fulfilled his wish. That's really beautiful. Now you also have some other stories that people might remember from Snowmageddon, we'll call it, um, including the baby that was born. Yes, uh, we, we all know the, the folklore, the legend <laughs> behind it, the, the skidoo coming up to the hospital. Um, you know, the legend will live on, but uh, we, yeah, so during the storm, baby snow, couldn't be any more fitting. And my, I think my favorite's in there, and maybe I'm a little biased because I'm relatively recently married, is um, the wedding photos. Yes. Because, you know, we all see lots of wedding photos on Facebook, mm -hmm. and they're always beautiful, but these are really special. Um, mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little about the story of the couple that went ahead with their wedding in the storm? Yeah, so Brianne and Christopher uh, from Harbor Grace, I believe, uh, they, they were to have their wedding uh, that, during the storm day. So, yeah, so basically their, their, their main wedding went ahead. But, uh, but, you know, like they, they decided to have their ceremony after the state of emergency. And so they, they made it an extra wedding, extra special wedding to remember. Uh -oh. And um, you've got a really special, uh, special guest, a pretty famous guy wrote the uh, foreword to your book. And that would be meteorologist, meteorologist Eddie Shear. Um, so how did you convince him to write this? And what, kind of, what did he kind of offer to you about the perspective on the storm? Well, my family, uh, Flanker Press, um, particularly my father, he reached out to Eddie Shear because, you know, he had the toughest job in the world during Snowmageddon, right? So I figured, what, no better person that could contribute to this book than the man himself. That's right. Um, and of course, you know, moving away from the storm, and it's all still fresh in our minds, mm -hmm. um, we're now into another crisis, right? Yes. And it's, you know, global in scale. And of mm -hmm. course, I'm referring to the COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah. And it, it's, of course, very different. Mm -hmm. But are there lessons you think that Newfoundlanders and Labradorians can take from what we went through in Snowmageddon and apply now? I think we need to not forget who we are. Um, you know, Snowmageddon 
brought out the absolute best in us. I think that's what truly defined who we are as Newfoundlanders. I mean, this was the uh, adversity is the one thing that us Newfoundlanders have known for 500 years. But every time that life threw a test at us, we still passed it. Um, this current crisis, I mean, situation may be a bigger one now. But I think Newfoundlanders, they need to let's not forget who we are and not turn away from uh, ourselves. I mean, it's, it's pretty easy to, to, to get caught up in all the news and all the, the hysteria, but the important thing is we need to remember who we are. We need to be there for each other more than ever. And I think if we do that, which I believe we will, we're, we're gonna pass this test unbelievably well. All right, listen, listen to what the uh, professionals are telling us and stay off the roads, but probably a little less partying than happened in Snowmageddon with our social distancing. Yeah. But the, um, the book, of course, it's for Newfoundland and Labrador. It's about Newfoundland and Labrador. Um, but are you getting any kind of reach across? Are you hoping that people outside the province see it? Absolutely. I've been getting messages from people in California, as far as Ontario, Alberta, uh, people in, in uh, other parts of the world, too. So... And, and they were even interested in my book, too, so. <laughs> That's wonderful. And um, for anybody who's l looking to pick up your book, um, mm -hmm. where can they find it? Uh, wherever fine books are sold, Costco, Kohl's, Chapters, uh, your favorite local mom and pop shop uh, throughout Newfoundland, all the Irvings across the province, uh, convenience stores, drug stores, you name it, as well on your favorite Newfoundland publisher site, flankerpress.com. And I know this is, I know we've uh, talked about your connection with the family business, but uh, it's a record time to get out a book. What yes. was it like getting a book out that fast? This is the <laughs> fastest book we've ever had get out to print. Uh, I think uh, between the state of emergency ending and the book going to print, like going to the printer, it, it was done in less than two weeks. Wow. Well, congrats on getting it out so fast and good luck with uh, the selling of the book because it's, yes. it's a great look back. Um, over some memories of quite mm -hmm. the storm. Oh, thank you. So thanks for coming in. Well, thank you. <laughs> Be right back with more Out of the Fog. All right, girls. Uh, Mom, you said it's played again. Workplace injuries hurt the most at home. We're the generation that had it all. We're the generation that had the music and the moves. We're the generation that had a dream. We came together to feed the world's children. We came together to protect them. And in this dangerous world, we have to keep on saving them and protecting them, even when we're gone. If we remember UNICEF in our will, We'll be the generation who left a better world for children. Please visit uniceflegacy.ca. Welcome back to Out of the Fog. I'm here with Renee Hackett, an actor and producer from right here in Newfoundland. Uh, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks for having me. Um, of course, we had you coming in to talk about uh, Birthday Balloon, yeah. a play which has now got some updates uh, scheduling-wise. But uh, knowing that it's going to be coming back, we figured we'll chat about it anyway and oh, see great. what else comes up. <laughs> so um, this play, Birthday Balloon, yeah. um, why don't you tell us a bit about, um, I guess, about that show? It's a play I did, it's written by Steve Cochran, and I did it in Toronto a couple of years ago at the Next Stage Theatre Festival, and it was very well received. It was first commissioned by Donna Butt and Rising Tide Theatre, actually, in 2016. Um, and then, yeah, I produced it and, and starred in it in Toronto. And yeah, the Hall programmed it for their presentation series. And the LSPU Hall? LSPU okay. Hall, yeah. Sure. And then I got uh, my director, Stephen Gallagher, from Toronto. I flew him and Brad Hodder in to do this play that's been canceled. <laughs> it's about, it's a, um, a modern day Newfoundland story. It's uh, but very relatable, very universal themes of like love and tragedy and loss and resilience. And it's about a couple at the end of their marriage and uh, infidelity felt like they forces them to basically um, realize their marriage is over. It happens in real time. So you watch this couple kind of fight it out and love it out and figure it out in about, it's about an hour and 15 minutes long. And yeah. I know um, 
this play was written long before Marriage Story, which became a yes. huge hit on Netflix, but it just shows that that's such a relatable oh, yeah. kind of, you know, theme and yep. a relatable story to understand people. So, oh, yeah. you know, I know this show play has played, um, you know, in many theaters, mm -hmm. um, you know, across the country, as you say, but what, what is the reaction to it? What do people, I guess, say when they, when they feel when they watch this show? Um, it, we had such a great response in Toronto. Um, it... Uh, People use words like harrowing to describe it, uh, relatable, real, authentic. Steve is such an authentic writer. Mm -hmm. As an actor, it's like a privilege to get to say his words, really. Um, it's just so, it's scathingly funny and heartbreaking at the same time, which is one of my favorite things to do as an actor and to see one people. One of the best to watch. One of the best to watch. And a lot of people who saw it actually said that they felt like they weren't supposed to be there. Uh, that there was oh, a it's sense so intimate. Of, you feel yeah, like, like a sense of well, I'm watching something I shouldn't watch, which is I l absolutely love seeing stuff like that. I absolutely love being in uh, plays like that. So, yeah, and it was set in modern Newfoundland times. The husband goes away to work and comes home, and it's what happens to their marriage while they're away from each other, and what the sacrifice, what sacrifices there are when one can't stay at home and be with their family to help them survive and keep them together. So it's very, um, the socioeconomic climate of Newfoundland today is absolutely very relevant and very um, uh, prevalent in the piece, but it's very relatable. People love, people lose people, people understand. They try to hold on to something that, like when do you let go, you know, that kind of feeling. Yeah. Now, of course, you're all set to go with this play and uh, for, I think, quite understandable reasons. Um, yeah. It had to be canceled because yeah. of the LSPU Hall. Um, uh, and sorry, the COVID-19 yeah. uh, pandemic shutting down really all provincial facilities. What, um, what was the reaction like, I guess, from the cast and crew when you get that news? Oh, we were sad. <laughs> we fully understood. We were yeah. waiting for it. They just flew in. It's just myself and Brad Hodder, the two cast members, and Emily Austin was the stage manager, and Stephen Gallagher was the director, is the director. Um, the four of us were in the rehearsal room and just realizing they flew in on Wednesday. We started rehearsal on Thursday, and it was canceled by Friday. So I'm happy the decision was made like it was made. I would prefer not to put people in an uncomfortable position to come and watch a play at the moment. Right. Uh, I know people are very supportive and would want to support you doing something, but it's the smartest thing to do and it's so sad because it's a very, very special piece that I think is really important for St. John's to see, you know? So, so do you hopefully think, it happens. So yeah, do you think it's gonna be, I guess, rescheduled to come back? That's the plan, I haven't given up hope. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is everyone's really busy too, right? Oh, because. Yeah. Um, well, Brad is in uh, Harry Potter, so that starts oh, rehearsal. Really? Yeah, he got that was announced a few days before rehearsal started. So I'm so proud of him and happy for him. And then Stephen is quite a busy director, and I'm for sure. but I'm here, so it's easier for me. So I'm, I'm holding out hope that I can possibly go and rehearse with them in Toronto, and then come back and do it. We'll see. It's all up in so the air. We'll keep at the our eyes open. Yes, for yeah, birthday bullying. Yeah, um, but of course, you know, I think it what you and your crew and cast or for this show are going through, um, you know, is really representative of what a lot of people mm -hmm. um, in the arts community and otherwise yeah. are, are dealing with because of the storm. And it's only the storm the, of the, the pandemic. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I think we're only at the tip of the iceberg, right? Yep. So, you know, for people, um, I guess, in the arts community mm -hmm. who are, you know, work project to project, that's the nature of the business. Yes. Um, I guess, can you speak a little bit about to what people are, you know, worried about at this point? There is a worry because our lives are pretty precarious in terms of financial stability as it is, anyone in the arts, and we kind of live our lives on spec, just waiting for something to happen, which helps something else happen. So once these things get stalled, of course, there's no consistency of income generally anyway. Um, so yeah, it is, it is scary, but there's a really strong community in this province, and uh, I'm hoping it'll be the same for everyone that's affected by this worldwide, really. But I feel like there's a real energy of people really wanting to help each other out. And hopefully we can pull together, pull our resources, and try to get the shows up that were meant to happen, you know? It, it feels like there's a possibility of that. I think right now it, the situation is overwhelming. No one really knows what's happening in the financial for everyone. I think about my friends who are servers as well. Like anyone that's not on salary, it's pretty scary right now, you know? Anyone in the service industry, any sort of um, job like that. So. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I feel like if there's any possible way, um, I think we'll all try to work together to get these things to happen, you know? And the LSPU Hall has been extraordinary throughout the whole thing, and 
been really fantastic. So yeah. Oh good. Yeah. Yeah, and I like to think that you know once I guess this all blows over, whenever it does, yeah. you know if everybody takes the appropriate precautions, that. Um, you know, the hall, the places like the LSPU Hall will be filled with people, filled I, with patrons and... Yes, I know. hope so. <laughs> and I felt like there was a real buzz for like, people really wanted to see yeah. birthday balloon, you know? So I'm hoping that, yeah, I, I feel like there will be. I'm just gonna have all the positivity <laughs> ever that, yes, it's gonna have positivity happen. right <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah, And hopefully. of course, speaking of this community, um, mm -hmm. you are a Newfoundlander, mm -hmm. uh, but you were away for many years and have come back um, to have. be a member of this arts community yeah. here as well. So mm -hmm. um, I guess for anybody who isn't aware of your, your career path uh, so far, what brought you home? Uh, I was home, I was, I made a film, my first film yeah. as a, a writer and producer uh, about three years ago. And uh, Steve Cochran, who I work with a lot, we are quite compatible. <laughs> He's a recurring character here. Yeah, exactly. I kind of like tend to work with a lot of the same people. Um, he was really um, positive and wonderful about my script, and uh, said that we should make it, make the film happen, shoot the film, which I'd never done. I was a theater person primarily, so then I showed it to Ruth Lawrence who's a fantastic producer in town and a Absolutely. woman of many trades, multi-hyphenate. <laughs> many <laughs> talents. I, many talents who I look up to immensely, super supportive. Uh, I showed it to her and we had a conversation and she said, yeah, we should make it happen. So I came home and shot the film on the Buren Peninsula oh, wow. in St. And Bernard's. Is that where you're from? Yes, in my parents' house, in my dad's friend's boat. It was And so. you were working from home. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Before we all had Exactly. To. <laughs> so then I, uh, we shot the film and then I moved back to Toronto and... I just realized I just really wanted to come home and it started spearheaded a whole sort of thingy. Yeah. And then eight months later I moved home. Oh lovely. Yeah. yeah. And of course you've been, you know, certainly embraced by this community. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um you recently won um an award through Arts N L. Yeah. Uh, you won the Rhonda Payne Award. I did. Uh, which is, you know, quite um an accomplishment. Mm -hmm. So what did it mean uh, for you to win an award win that award? Oh it was incredible it was extremely moving and touching and uh inspiring and encouraging i was so shocked when he called me reg windsor called me from the arts and l and i said nothing for probably a minute and finally i was like why because i was like what is going on i was just so honored by it and it was just such a beautiful gesture to be to feel so a part of a community that I've come back to. I was nervous to move home. I have a whole community of friends and people in the industry that I work in in Toronto, and I have a lot of friends here. And it, I, I just felt really touched by it, really honored, really, yeah. And the people that have won that award, to even be near them, their names written in the same sentence is pretty outstanding for me. So, yeah, it was wonderful it felt great <laughs> so what is next for you um coming off you know this award mm -hmm. and and i know that you had this play planned mm -hmm. but um what, what would you like to do next uh i just uh i just applied to, i'm trying to get a series um i have some interest for a series that like I'm a television hoping, series yeah oh, that wow. i'm hoping to um a comedy drama that I'm hoping to get development money for. There's mm -hmm. some interest in it, so um, I'm trying to get that finished and have that ready and polished uh, to pitch to some people. Uh, I just made my first film, so I'm hoping to make more films, and hopefully the first thing I'd be doing is trying to get Birthday Balloon up and running, and yeah. also to produce and get Spin shot, because it's this beautiful short film uh, through the Picture Start program through NIFCO. Okay. And uh, it's about a 12 minute short film about a, a family who have been met with um, some sort of uh, out of nowhere circumstance, something unexpected, and it's how their family adjusts to this new norm. And it's very beautiful, very relatable again. I'm a very big fan of work that has women, especially like broken women who are resilient. <laughs> <laughs> I think everything I write seems to be like that, or everything I want to watch. and. Oftentimes their resilience comes from a sense of humor and comedy, so I love the pairing of both. And that film certainly has that as well. So I, that's the main thing, is hoping to get funding for these things and to get these things up and running. And make well, I'm very sorry to hear about um, Birthday Balloon, yeah. but we're gonna keep an eye out. We'll let our viewers know as soon as it's rescheduled. That's great, thank you, I appreciate that. Thanks for checking with us and, and uh, I guess chatting to us about what's, uh, what you and the rest of your community is dealing with right now. So thanks a lot and thank uh, we'll talk to you soon. Me. Okay, thanks. Be back with more Out of the Fog. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. 
Thanks for watching Out of the Fog, and thank you so much to Nick Cranford for coming by to chat with us about NL Snowmageddon 2020. It is a beautiful book um, with lots of bright pictures all about the storm um, and the cleanup effort that followed, and the community effort and the uh, sense of helping each other that all happened during that storm. And then thanks again to Renee Hackett for chatting with us about the play Birthday Balloon that they were about to launch at the LSPU Hall and of course now has going to have to be postponed. So we'll keep an eye out for um, whenever it's rescheduled and let you know. So thanks again for watching. Um, stay away from big crowds, practice your social distancing and wash your hands. Stay safe and we'll see you next time on Out of the Fog. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect